First, autonomous cars and connected cars are safer. And there, I, there is no government on earth who is not preoccupied with safety. 90% of the car accidents are due to human error. If you reduce human machine interface, you're going to reduce car accident. And this is something which is a basic interest of many governments, if not all of them, Chinese government also. So that's number one. Number two, consumers like that. Why consumers like that? Because it's easier to drive when you have autonomous drive. It's easier, less stress. And then, that means, I don't know what is the average time that a Chinese driver spend in his car, but I suspect that when you're in Beijing, or you are in Shanghai, or you are in Guangzhou, people who are commuting spend a lot of time in their car. Two hours, three hours. Today, during these two, three hours, they can do nothing. They need to have their hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Allowing them to relax from this and do something else is huge. So there is a consumer demand for this. There is consumer appetite for this. There is an interest for social, uh, uh, for social benefit. On top of this, as you know, the connectivity of the car is going to allow us to have a much better management of traffic, the traffic condition. So that's why I, I doubt that any government, and certainly not the Chinese government, which usually have policies on the long term, is going to oppose that. There are going to be a lot of regulation, because cyber security is a big concern. There are many concerns. Reliability is a big concern, etc. But it's up to us to make sure that with the technology we are bringing, we can calm down these, uh, these concerns. So I'm not worried. I, I think, as you, know, as you say, I mean, Chinese consumer like technology. They like things which are avant-garde. And they're going to be jumping on every opportunity of autonomous cars and more connected cars. And, and that's why we are testing a lot in China and talking to the regulator in China about these technologies. Thank you. My second question is, uh, um, as Nissan has uh, already launched the Serena with uh, ProPilot uh, autonomous driving technology. And, and what's Nissan's view on the legal responsibility uh, when an autonomous driving car has an accident on the public street? Yeah. Well, uh, when, when the driver is in the car, when the driver is in the car, he's responsible. If he drives or he doesn't drive, he's responsible. Unless there is a mechanical problem or a technical problem in the car, in which obviously car manufacturer is responsible for it. But whenever you have a driver in the car, there is no problem of who is responsible, who is liable. Still. Now, the problem of responsibility is much more difficult when there is no driver in the car. This is, this is where the problem is. But today, on the Serena one-lane highway, frankly, there is no problem. And that, one of the reasons we launched it in Japan and on one car is because we have feedback from consumer. We want to see what's wrong, what they like, what they don't like, how can we improve it? And so far, the feedback is very strong. As you know, 60% of the people buying a Serena are buying it with this option. And this option is a paying option. It's not a free option. Free option doesn't mean anything. They are paying for that. And 60% continue to buy it, which is a great, you know, which is a great first step towards autonomous cars.